Ireland's wetlands include fens, wet meadows and turlocks, as well as bogs. Ireland's wetlands and peatlands are critical elements in the ecosystem in which we live. They provide us with many benefits and essential economic services. But when they're prevented from functioning naturally, things can quickly turn catastrophic. These bodies of watery, acidic soil maintain a delicate balance of aquatic plants, insects and microbes, which have an innate ability to cleanse water, which we can then use when our water is in short supply. They also form natural storage reservoirs for sudden rain deluges, helping to prevent flooding. However, over time, our wetlands and peatlands have been almost wrung dry. Ireland's peatlands are regarded internationally as incredibly precious. Our few remaining raised bogs are some of the last examples of this habitat in the world. Jim Ryan is a wildlife inspector with the National Parks and Wildlife Service. I met him here in a bog in Kildare. Jim, can you tell us about this bog that we're at here? Well, we're on the edge of uh, Balnafar Bog, uh, which is part of the Bog of Allen, one of the, the few remaining bits of the Bog of Allen. Most of the rest of it has been cut away. So what's happened to this bog here, specifically? Basically, this is a raised bog. It's, uh, the raised bogs grow in uh, depressions in the landscape, often over old lake beds and places like that. They accumulate peat over thousands of years, and they, they gradually form a dome. So what percentage of our bogs are protected and uh, who owns these bogs? Well, in, in relation to the raised bogs where we have uh, good statistics, there was originally over 300,000 hectares. Of that, there's about 50,000 hectares left. The rest has been cut away. Of that uh, 50,000 hectares, uh, uh, just over 20,000 hectares is in protected areas, or about half of that is in the SACs. When you talk about an SAC, what do you mean? Uh, an SAC is, is a special area of conservation. They are, it's a, a special uh, protection required by the Habitats Directive for habitats that are threatened within Europe. And um, when, when they're given the designation, it means that any damaging activity is supposed to uh, cease. Clara Bog is a raised bog in County Offaly. Here I met Dr. Florence Renault Wilson, project manager of the Bogland Research Project, which has been funded by the EPA Strive Programme. Florence brought me to a rare section of active, intact raised bog and explained to me what makes this habitat so special. They are the last um, great area of wilderness in the world, in a way, in a way but Ireland has, has, has them. They are unique because they are home to rare species that have adapted to live in harsh conditions that are here on the bog. So what sort of species grow in bogs like this? When you think about biodiversity, um, unlike the jungle, bogs don't have many species, but they're rare and uh, some actually threatened species. So you've got sedges and, and heather, but what is the most important is what is the building block of, of raised bogs are the sphagnums, which you have here. You have a hummock of sphagnum species, which that's what peat is, is made of. Um, Pretty spongy, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's like a cushion. There's more water in here than in a pint of milk. And you can just squeeze mm. it there and sphagnum grow and when it grows it absorbs the carbon from the atmosphere keep it in its leaves and, and stems and when it dies it, 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 it turns into peat and the peat is then stored the carbon is stored there in the peat for thousands and thousands of years and that's been happening for the last ten thousands of years in Ireland. With just a tiny fraction less than one percent of a raised bog still actively forming peat we may well see the extinction of these bogs during our lifetime. But enforcing their status as SACs is a complex task. There are people who own the land beneath the bog, and also people who had the right to cut turf for domestic purposes. In our protected boglands, there may have been 20,000 such rights to cut turf. What's the status now regarding cutting turf within our protected areas? When they were designated, Turf cutting for domestic purposes was allowed to continue for 10 years so that people could find alternative sources of fuel during that period of time. 
That 10 years is up for 31 of the SAC raised bogs and there is not supposed to be any more uh, turf cutting uh, from now on on those uh, sites. Jim, this is a special area conservation, so what's happening here? Well, let me show you and uh, it's a, a, a sad tale. You had a, a big machine in here earlier on uh, this year. It was scooping away at the uh, bank there, dug down as deep as it can into the uh, bottom of the bog to get the, the, the black peat. And you can see the amount of damage that is done, not just locally here, but also to the, to the face bank. You get serious cracking. Uh, extending back into the, into the bog, which also increases the, uh, the drying out that happens to the bog. So it's what happens to the bog once it's been cut that forms the most dramatic part of the findings of the Bogland Research Project. This adds an entirely new dimension to the destruction of our bogs and makes preserving them absolutely critical. The research undertaken by Florence and her team shows that peatland destruction is also contributing hugely to climate change. I was shocked to hear just how much CO2 the degraded bogs are emitting. So one of our most important findings in the Bogland project um, is how much actually carbon is stored in Irish bogs. The majority of Irish bogs are actually degraded, so they have lost their function of carbon sequestration and instead they are, uh, the process is reversed and they are emitting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And they're emitting at a much higher rate than obviously carbon is sequestering in an intact bog. So compared to the 200,000 tonnes of carbon that is sequestering um, per annum in Irish bogs, we have 10 million tonnes of carbon dioxide being emitted annually from our degraded bogs. 10 million tonnes, that's one seventh of our total greenhouse gas emissions in Ireland. That's a huge amount. How is this happening? What happens when turf is cut is um, it is, the bog is firstly drained and the water table drops. What this means if the water table drops is that things start to decompose and then the carbon is released into the atmosphere. So everywhere where the, the peat is exposed or is drying, carbon is being emitting into the atmosphere. To put it into context, these recent preliminary findings of 10 million tonnes of CO2 coming from our bogs each year is nearly equal to all the power we use in our homes. It includes just over one million tonnes from industrial cutaway bogs. 2.7 million tonnes from industrial peat burning for electricity. Just over one million tonnes from domestic burning. And a shocking figure of almost three million tonnes from degraded cut bogs. Industrial cut bogs are no longer being opened and hopefully they will be restored to the original carbon storing function. But where private commercial turf cutting has dried out the bog, this huge amount of CO2 will continue to be released every year, possibly for many decades. If we take this into account, this makes turf by far the most carbon intensive fuel we can burn in Ireland, even more destructive to the environment than the very polluting coal. Hopefully, in the future, there might be the opportunity and the funding support to re-wet our boglands and begin the gradual process of storing carbon once more. This will mean shifting to more efficient ways of using energy and switching from fossil fuels to renewable sources. Like most of us who grew up in Ireland, I have fond memories of burning peat to keep warm. But most of the heat generated by peat in an open fire goes up the chimney. Unlike peat, wood is carbon neutral, and because I'm burning it in a stove, it's four times more efficient than in an open fire, and therefore much more economical. So if we switch to more efficient and renewable fuels and protect our bogs, how then can we restore them to their full health and ecological functions? Here in Clara, where 
we protect this Clara bog has been uh, protected for a while now but as you know turf cutting has been going on now turf cutting is finally banned and we can now move to have very efficient restoration methods applied and people have been working very hard for over 20 years to restore Clara bog blocking the drains that have been put in place and then trying different methods of reinstating the vegetation um, so that the bog can have all its full function again as a, as a bog ecosystem. The Bogland project recommends that turf cutting should cease on all our SACs. This will be made possible through a scheme where the turf cutter will be financially compensated. And there's a real urgency to address the damage already done. To keep our bogs um, alive for the next generation, we need to stop cutting turf on protected sites. We can't be expecting other people uh, throughout the world to be protecting tropical rainforests, coral reefs, things like that, uh, that everyone accepts should be protected, while uh, we continue to destroy our bogs. That just doesn't make sense.